danger, knives, and firearms. Let's have a toast to the youth of Miss Lily Lang. Miss Lily. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Draw Western Rap. And we're watching Judge Roy Bean, and this episode is called Letty Leaves Town. It's where the beautiful Miss Jackie Lowry, who portrays Letty, is talked into going to San Francisco by a couple of con. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Judge Roy Bean, Lady Leaves Town, right here on Draw Western Route. in the United States was the desolate region west of the Pecos River. Virtually beyond the reach of the authorities, the railroads, then pushing their way west, attracted the most vicious characters in the country. It was said that all civilization and law stopped at the east bank of the Pecos. It took one man, a lone storekeeper who was sick of the lawlessness, to change all this. His name was Judge Roy Bean. Let's get off. I want to show you something. Aren't you coming? You might help me down. Help you down? What's the matter? Don't you feel good? I feel wonderful. I'd just like to be treated like a lady once in a while. All right, here. See why I'd like to have a ranch house right here? Yeah, I see. It's, it's very beautiful, Jeff. But why tell me about it? Oh, I don't know. I just felt like telling somebody, I guess. Look at that view. The road and everything. Look how easy it is to see that wagon coming along. Hey, lady, look. Something's wrong. Take that box you picked up at the railroad. All right, you can have it. I don't aim to get filled full of lead for any box I'm carrying. Hey, am I glad to see you folks. Thorndike, are you all right? I am now. Did those fellas get away with anything? Nope. They was after a box I picked up at the railroad. Still here. It was that shooting that made them skedaddle. I never seen such shooting from the back of a moving horse. 
You'll have to thank Letty for that. She handles a gun like a man. <laughs> handles a gun like a man. Can't you think of me as a woman just once? You're mighty touchy all of a sudden about being ladylike. Klondike, yep. we'll ride along with you in case those umbrellas try to jump you again. I'll appreciate it. Get up. Ha! Ow, no! How do you do, Mr. Carlson? Hi, Judge. Well, I guess I'll be pulling out pretty soon, so if you don't mind, I'll take my sample case now. Oh, yeah, I'll get it for you. They don't open this old safe holds thousand dollars worth of jewelry. Yeah, much obliged to you for keeping it, Judge. Wish it could be this safe all the time. Yeah, I can't say I blame you. Being a jewelry salesman in this part of the country must be a pretty risky business. <laughs> yeah, there's always someone trying to knock you over. <laughs> Where are you going when you leave this part of the country? Well, I'm heading north for Salt Lake City. Then I'm going to catch the Southern Pacific for the coast. Hello. Hi. Anything I can do for you? Yes, there is. My name is Brady, a railroad detective. I'm looking for Mr. Carlson. I'm Carlson. We shipped a box to you from the railhead this morning. Did it get here? No, not yet. Any more jewelry? $5,000 worth. It's a special consignment shipped to a firm in San Francisco that I'm delivering. You worried about it, Mr. Brady? A little. We've had several holdups lately. That's funny. I haven't heard about any holdups. I've heard about them. I want to see the shipment get through. Yeah, I think you hear them coming now. Here it is. Brought it through. Yeah, I knew you would, Klondike. If it hadn't been for Jeff and Letty, I'd have never made it. That's right, Uncle Roy. A couple of masked men held me up. Jeff and Letty ran them off. Oh, where'd they stop you? Other side of Bascom's Rock. Here, check what's inside and sign for it. No more of these trips for me. Too risky. <laughs> All right, let me get in and take it, boy. What happened, Jeff? You better check it right away. Get me that little pry bar, Jeff. Well, there's no need to open it now. I can look at it later. So Klondike wants you to sign for it now. <gasps> kind of pretty, isn't it? Pretty? That's the prettiest sight I ever saw. Well, I guess I'd better go out and sign a receipt for the Teamster. You all seem to be there, Mr. Carl. Yes, they seem all right. Excuse me a moment, will you? Where's that receipt? Here it is. There you are. Thanks. Ah, get up out of here! What happened to the holdup? How can I collect from the insurance company for a robbery that never happened? Take it easy. We'll stage another holdup. Uh, sure. You had that teamster say he wouldn't make the trip again. I've got to have an honest witness to make that story stick with the insurance company. We'll work it out. Of course, another holdup's going to mean more trouble. We should get to keep more than a third of the jewels for our part in the deal. All right. Make it half. <laughs> say, you're okay, Carlson. Reasonable. We'll keep our half and deliver the other half to you and Carson Bend, right? Yeah, that's right. Now, you better get out of town before that judge finds out about you. Oh, he's not that smart. Say, how about that girl for your witness? Good. Yeah, the one in the store. She almost went crazy when she saw those jewels. If you could get her to take a ride with you... <laughs> Say, that's not a bad idea. You know, I might try that. <laughs> Go to work on her.
Pretty, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Try it on. Well, I, I really shouldn't, but I'd love to. How do you like that? Whoa. <laughs> Try this. Beautiful. There. Now, how's that? Oh, lovely. Just lovely. You know what's going on in there? That's can we come in? That salesman. He's sweet-talking Letty, and she's listening. Oh, nothing to that. The jewelry. Women just like pretty things, that's all. Yeah, but she's sopping it up like gravy. And how do you like this one? Oh, they're gorgeous. Everything's gorgeous. You know, you should be wearing things like this all the time. And wouldn't I love to? A beautiful lady like you is completely lost in a place like this. Didn't anyone ever tell you that? Uh, no. All they ever tell me is how well I can ride or shoot. <laughs> That's because they don't appreciate a lovely little lady like you. Oh, I guess they don't. Well, you should be in a big city. Women nowadays, you know, are doing much more than just sewing and cooking. You know, you should come to San Francisco with me, work in my office. <laughs> it would open up a whole new world for you. Guess it would, wouldn't it? You know what that fellow just said to Letty? She was sure living in a marvelous age and peeling them apples for a pie for supper tonight. What you gonna do with that one? Peel it. He wants her to go away with him so she can work in San Francisco. What did the lady say? Stood there like a calf without his mother. Now, don't put him in the sink. Letty don't like it. What are you gonna do about this? She's your niece. Mm, I'm just right for pie. I think I'll just run that jeweler right out of town. Mm. Now, take it easy. I'll have to have a talk with the lady. You stupid fools, what happened with that holdup? Somebody else horned in before we could go through with it. <laughs> a man and a girl, so you had to turn to run? It was either run or get shot. Well, we've got to do it over again. Yes, I figured we would. It'll be Carlson and a girl heading north. What girl? The judge's niece. Well, she's the one that did the shooting the last time. Well, she won't be doing it this time, so stop worrying. Well, I don't like it. We're working too close to Langtree. The judge is smart, and that deputy of his is dynamite with a gun. I don't like it. Well, don't worry about the judge and his deputy. I'll handle them if anything goes wrong. And besides, we're getting half of the jewels instead of only a third of them. I figure we should get all of it. Huh? Yeah. Say, that's not a bad idea. Letty, can I talk to you? In the kitchen. What about you and this man, Carlson? Jeff's telling me he's trying to get you to leave Langtree. I think Jeff should mind his own business. Now, let's talk about Carlson. Is he trying to get you to go away? Well, yes, Uncle Roy. He wants me to go and work in his office in San Francisco. How do you feel about that? I don't know. It, it sounds kind of good. After all, there isn't too much of a future for a girl here. We'd sure hate to lose you, honey. You better give it a lot of thought. <laughs> I just peeled some apples for a pie. I'd sure like to have it for supper. Guess I'd better get to work then. Is Letty coming back? You mean Miss Bean? Yeah, sure. She'll be back when she gets here. Okay, I'll wait. I wouldn't if I were you. No, why not? You've been putting a lot of ideas in her head lately that don't belong there. And you better stop as of now. <laughs> you know, I don't think she'd agree with you. You just tell her I'll be back later. Where have you been? Out getting the boys set. Well, it might be a waste of time. The girl hasn't said... Hold it. I'll see you later. Right. I 
I'm meeting town in the morning. I want you to drive me. Like I said before, mister, no more trips for a while. And I said I wanted you to drive me. And I said no more... <laughs> Let go of me! Let go of me! Now you're gonna drive me, or aren't you? You all right? He didn't hurt me. I'm fine. You know, I feel pretty good myself right now. Come on, Klondike. Better forget about Klondike and concentrate on the girl. Good dinner, Letty. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Jeff. The pie was great. Did Uncle Roy have a second piece? He's eating it now. <laughs> what happened to your jeweler friend? Well, he's still around the settlement. He offered you a job in the big city, didn't he? Anything wrong with that? Well, you're just not qualified. What do you mean? Getting to be a secretary takes learning. Don't you think I can learn? You're just a big tomboy. And I suppose you're a big man of the world, with hay in your hair. Well, I'm not letting some slicker fill me full of hot air about the big city. Maybe I liked what he said. Why don't you take him up on it, then? Why don't you go to the big city? I may do just that. Well, go ahead. I guess we can get along without you. I dare you. You take that back, Jeff Taggart. I said it and I meant it. I dare you. You're just a big tomboy. And I suppose you're a big man of the world. In your hair. Well, I'm not letting some slicker fill me full of hot air about the big city. Maybe I liked what he said. Not this time. Sit down. Thanks. Carlson been around? I heard a wagon pull out about sun up. I think he's gone. I'm sorry. I was hoping he'd stay here a while longer. Why? Those hold-up men. They'll probably make another try at getting that shipment of jewelry. Won't do much good. What do you mean by that, Judge? I'm afraid Mr. Carlson isn't quite on the square. Why do you say that? Because of the way he acted. He kept his sample case in that safe, and he worried about it all the time. Well, nothing wrong with that, is there? Oh, not at all. But he got real careless after that big shipment came in. Didn't watch it, didn't care what happened to it. You want to know why, Mr. Brady? Yeah, why? Because that big shipment was made up of fake jewelry. Fake? Are you sure? You bet I'm sure. Come over here and I'll show you. He got so careless, he left these behind. Hand me that hammer. Now, if those are real stones, they're genuine, a little tap of this hammer won't bother. But if they're not... Paste. Yeah, they're fake, all of them. I'm afraid our friend, Mr. Carlson's out to double-cross somebody. Yeah, I think I know who. You want Jeff to bring him in for questioning? No. That's my job. I'll take care of Carlson.
wanted me to go with Mr. Carlson, so I've gone. Letty. Judge! Letty's gone. She left I... with the jeweler. She left this. It's all my fault. Your fault? Yeah, I made fun of her last night. I'm going after her. We'll both go. What's the matter? Well, I'm afraid I've made a bad mistake. I'd like to turn around and go back. Oh, I can't do that. I have a work schedule to keep. But please, I don't want to go to San Francisco. All right, all right. The first stop we come to, I'll arrange for your return on the stagecoach. Now, how's that? All right. <laughs> Take that box you're carrying with you. There's nothing but fake jewelry in that box. Mr. Brady! You thought you were going to make fools out of us, didn't you? But there's real stuff in that sample case of yours. Hand it over, Carlson. Uh, sure. Get his sample case, Trigo. All right, just a minute. You should have stayed out of this, Miss Bean. You're nothing but a thief and a killer. Well, I guess we'll have to do something about you. Trigo, you drive the buckboard and follow me. Keep the rig here and take the girl out in the desert and leave her there. No, you wouldn't do that. Shut up. That's pretty rough, Brady. Can you think of something better? She wanders around out there and gets lost. Whose fault's that? Well, look, Brady, after all, I mean... Hey, look. It's going to be easy. Not with Letty down there. Hey, Jim. Remember that trick we played on Prescott? I get it.
Keep your eye on him. You men down there. This is Judge Bean. Go on back to your store, Judge. Calling this court into session here and now. You're charged with robbery, kidnapping, and murder. How do you plead? <laughs> You're wasting your time, Judge. You can't do nothing to us unless you got us under arrest. Drop those guns. Don't turn around. You're under arrest right now. <laughs> well, Eddie, you ready to go home? Oh, I sure am. <laughs> Climb up, then. Maybe you better give her a hand, Jeff. Give her a hand. Madam, your carriage is ready. Why, thank you, sir. All right, you hombers, get headed back toward Langtree. Up. That boy's got a lot to learn about courting. <laughs> courting. <laughs> Court's adjourned. <laughs> to stand.